so you'll see from the footage that my attempt yesterday at a day in the life of didn't go to plan. Everything was going fine <laughs> until we had a problem with the fuel pressure on main engine one. Things got a bit hectic because we were on pilotage uh, underway. Main engine one had been on the board for probably two hours at that point and it had been running at high load for uh, probably 45 minutes like, and um, all of a sudden we lost fuel pressure. Immediate thoughts are uh, filters are blocked up, change the filters over, still no improvement. Standby pump had failed to start. We were only seeing at the engine like uh, 0.8 bar fuel pressure. Now the engine was a high load so it was sucking fuel in basically. We thought we'd got it figured out with uh, um, one of the pressure regulating valves had given up on the system. It turned out not to be the case. And over sort of, I'd say a couple of hours, we've basically worked our way through, through the system, through the possible faults. We're at the reasonable conclusion that the engine driven fuel oil pump has stopped working. Whether or not it's disintegrated or something's come apart, we don't know but uh, the engine isn't able to supply its own fuel pressure, which is uh, different. I mean, saying to Chris, I have never seen one of these gear-driven fuel oil pumps fail, never. But, you know, I think it's impossible. Today, it's a new day, it's four o'clock in the morning. Uh, Chad stayed down a little while longer to give Chris and I some extra, extra, uh, extra rest, which was fantastic. Thank you, Chad. I've got the, uh, the fluffy mic on top. And uh, we're going to go and climb around underneath the forward end of number one. So I suspect it's going to be pretty dark, so I don't know how well any footage might come across. We'll give it a go. We've found the cause of the problem on the inside of this. It's meant to be a gear wheel, a drive wheel. Uh, as you can see, it's not there. That answers the question why we didn't have any fuel pressure is because the fuel pump wasn't turning. So we've got what remains of the fuel pump off the front of the engine. And we're now gonna have a look inside the engine for the remainder of the fuel pump. This sort of thing, this doesn't happen very often. This is uh, it's pretty wild. What Chris is doing at the moment is just taking the inspection cover off. The uh, accessory end of the engine. Yep, found the drive wheel. Great pry bar with the long one there. Yeah, this is a, a peek inside the engine. Here are the accessory drives. Up there in the top corner, you can't really see it very well. Up there somewhere is where the fuel pump should have been. And if you look, terribly framed but I've kind of got to go in there and dig out some ball bearings. So I have a suspicion that we're going to have to take up this grating and wipe the sun out. The mission to empty the sump on main engine one continues. So basically we've managed to drop the level in the sump to next to nothing and the uh, unfortunate next step is to climb in and start cleaning. So uh, obviously I'm not going to take this camera with me, but I have the GoPro.
there for, I'd say, two hours, basically mopping up any oil, looking for any traces of uh, metal that's made it into the sump. Uh, unfortunately, there was some down around the first three units, but uh, to be expected after failure, maybe. Is it good? No. We obviously have got four of the same type of engine on board, so we are now having to check the remaining engines one by one to check that they're not at risk of imminent failure. This evening we're going to check main engine three. Hope, fingers crossed, touch wood, it, it'll be fine. The hours on that engine are about four times higher than they are on main engine one, so if, if the same issue had been present, you might reasonably expect that it would already have failed, but, you know, we have to check, so uh, check we will. I don't want to give you the uh, impression that I'm, I'm not having fun. I am, but too fun. Right, um, it is 10 past one in the morning. I have finished my rounds. I have been trying in vain to talk to the camera. Right, it's fine. Uh, Is it off? Is it already off? It's Fuck, help me. It's all right for me. <laughs> Thank God. I was just terrified you were going to be like, Ugh. Yeah. thing is the amount of movement that is a significant amount of wobble in something that shouldn't wobble so uh, unfortunately that's now another pump failure but thank god we caught this one when we did obviously there's still some damage to the uh, to the main drive gear but nothing compared to what we have on main engine one. So uh, it's a nice surprise for the chief when he wakes up in the morning. I'm gonna go and start permanently isolating the fuel system again, and uh, we'll see how Chris is doing. So Chris, Chris was meant to be, or is trying to basically put in a joint piece in a flange on the cooling system. But because of the way our cooling systems are set up, it is a real pig to isolate the engines. On previous ships I've been on, you've maybe had four valves. LT in, LT out, HT in, HT out. I think Chris has closed nine valves and it's still not holding back the water. Hey everybody, so I really hope you liked that last video. It was by far my favourite to edit and I remember thinking at the time that I was filming this is so cool. Obviously that sort of problem is not normal, but again, that's I think that's what most marine engineers kind of live for, are those like unusual problems that you haven't seen before. But that is it maybe. This is the end of what I'm calling season two, because I did not keep filming after that. The workload just went up too far and it wasn't practical to keep filming. So I hope, really hope that you've enjoyed seeing what you've seen so far and if you have please like and subscribe and i will catch you all the next time i sign on for season three take care